In this video, we will continue on with the filtering of the date array, but in this case, we have already a filter working. What I want to do now, I want to build up another level, and that is putting two specific date inputs here, making them the filtering of this here. All right, so that's what we're going to do. First of all, what we're going to do is here, we're going to say input, and we say here, uh, type equals date, and then make sure that there's quotations, of course, and then what I want to do is I want to copy that one, but what we all have to do is two things. I'm going to put in this here. We have another one, and this will be an ID. And we have to also give it a function as well. So we say here, uh, start date, that will be probably the most appropriate. And then this will be ending date or end date. Very straightforward, nothing fancy. We have this here. So what I want to do is we have here a certain item. So what we're going to do here first, let's make this. Let me say here constant. And then we get here the start date. Say start date equals a document dot get element by ID. And then oh, make sure that it's small letters or the small letter D, but the I for India should be capitalized. All right. Then we get here this. This is a string. There we are. So another one. Put in the ending date or end date. There we are. All right. So we grab this one here. So what we should have here eventually is a default value. So I'm going to put in a default value here just to ensure that our value would not be different. So I'm going to grab here the starting point and the ending point or it should not be blank. If it's blank, you get an error, of course, but a function might not work properly. Let's put it in here. Oh, this should be 30, of course. That's the last value. All right. So I save this now here, refresh, all right, we have these here, we have these nice items here, beautiful. So what we want to do now is we want to make sure that this here is being triggered on a function. So we say here function, and this function here, uh, well you can say filter date array, I'm just going to give it a very straightforward name, but of course you can give it anything you want. This one here, remove these curly braces. All right, so we have this here, we have these arrays. Uh, let's see here. All right, so what are we going to do here? First of all, we want to make sure that this here is being changed by this specific value here. So we're going to grab this, we put this in here. Secondly, we're going to grab the end date, put it in here. And then what we want to do here is we want to trigger this. So every time when this is being triggered, we should have a uh, response here. So what we can do here, maybe that will be very easy. On um, uh, change, I guess that would be probably the best one. So the moment we change the data, at that moment on change, we will say trigger this. All right, and. As I can see here, we should have a certain value here because this one will be should be dot value. Very important here, if you don't do this, you'll get an error because it doesn't pinpoint the value because here we only get the ID itself of that uh, tag. So what we're going to do is this, all right, so we have that now. We say here, we put in this, all right, fill the date array, from change. And then we have, here the other one let's see here uh, sorry that would should be copied like that paste here and save so if you have this now let's open up our console log if we select now a different date what happens if we do 29 as you can see now we're starting to have a filter of course our filter is right now not really intelligent however that doesn't matter so much because this will probably not be uh, that in depth however you can see now if we select here uh, 27 again, we go back here to 27, there we are. We have 26 as well. Let's make sure that we have everything. So I'm going to remove this date. We only get the filter date. And now we have this here. We get 27, so we start 27 up to 30, all right. Now we go 29, there we are. And this is basically the way how we can start to filter. And if you understand this, you probably will figure out very quickly how we are going to filter in chart.js itself with those dates.